Hello. So today I'm going to be talking about Jennifer Egan's The Candy House. This is my first uh, Jennifer Egan novel. Um, I never got round to reading A Visit from the Goon Squad, which I think won the Pulitzer Prize in around 2010, something like that, uh, and was loved by many people. A lot of people really love that book. Uh, I understand that The Candy House is somewhat of a companion piece, or could be considered maybe a sequel uh, to A Visit from the Goon Squad, but as I haven't read A Visit from the Goon Squad, I have no idea where those connections and links may happen within this novel. The Candy House is a series of short stories that all kind of intertwine, intertwingle, <laughs> as uh, the novel progresses. And as you're reading these different short stories from these different characters' perspectives, you are slowly piecing together uh, those connections and figure, figuring out almost like the family trees and where those characters connect to each other. I think if you had already read A Visit from the Goon Squad, you would also be piecing together those connections to that novel as well, which might have made this novel a little bit richer. The story starts off with an introduction to this character called Bix, who is a tech god, you know, a Mark Zuckerberg, if you will, who is looking for fresh ideas. Um, he has become stale and bored in what he does, so he starts sneaking into these university kind of meeting groups where they just talk and chat and he goes in disguise in order to kind of chat and talk about tech and what could be the future. It's throughout that process, or I think it's around about that process, that he comes up with this idea for a kind of shared consciousness. So he creates a subscription-based kind of program in which people can upload their memories uh, onto the sort of cloud and um, in doing so you get access to various other people's memories who are also a part of that subscription service and also have chose to upload their, their memories onto it. And each story comes at this kind of technology from a different angle. Some stories don't really broach the technology at all and are just characters who are linked to the creation of that uh, technology or have been byproducts of that technology. What I quite liked about Jennifer Egan's approach, and I think this might be the same with uh, Visit from the Goon Squad, is that there is real distinction in each story being told. There is real distinction in the voice of the character and the story they're telling. I found that to be the most compelling part. Whether, you know, the entire email thread, and I listened to it on audiobook, so, any novel that has sort of an email thread in it when you listen to it on audiobook can become very irritating uh, with the dear whatever, 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 send, dear whatever, whatever, you know, it just becomes a little bit sort of repetitive, um, probably better to read off of the page. They did feel a little gimmicky in the sense of going, okay, very interesting approach to each story, but how, what is it doing, what is it driving at? What are all these creative approaches trying to make me feel and what are they building me towards? And this is where the novel fell down for me because while I found the voices to be unique, I found the book to be incredibly well written. I actually really enjoyed Jennifer Egan's uh, writing style. It didn't have much impact. There was only about three stories out of the many that are in this book that I really latched onto and the ones that I, funny enough, really latched onto weren't that driven by the technology. The story of the mother, daughter and the, the sort of rock and roll rock star producer and about the mother going away, that, that little story of it was probably my favourite and the one that stuck with me. And it had very, very little to do with the technology at play. I think what Kenneth Egan is trying to explore with this novel is the idea of nostalgia. Now, every story is, you know, it's about memory. It's about what we remember, what we choose to remember, and how we perceive things. Uh, this novel at its highest is when it's looking at the idea of going, how did we perceive, perceive a memory? How was that memory perceived by the person who we were with when we go back and revisit that memory? Did it have as much impact? That memory changed my life. Did that memory mean anything to the person I was with? And that is where I felt like this novel was at its strongest. But unfortunately, I don't feel it pulled on that thread as much as it could have. That could have been the entire build of this novel. Every story could have been a memory that all linked together, leading us to something, leading us to some sort of climax or moment or revelation in which we can really dissect what's going on. It never did that.
And I finished the novel feeling a little bit like that was all right. And that's all I can say for this book. I will have to go and, and read A Visit from the Goon Squad because I understand that is loved by many. But I just, I finished it and I went, that was all right. I didn't, I didn't hate any of it and I really didn't. I didn't dislike any of this book, but I also didn't really like much of this book either. And I don't know, I think there's just something at the central heart of what this novel was talking about that doesn't go far enough. I wanted to look at the idea of going from reading this novel all the way through I was playing this game of like is nostalgia a disease or is it not? Is nostalgia good for us or is it not? Is the truth of a memory good for And nothing in the writing of this really took me there and really made me question that thing. At the end of it I think what Jennifer Egan is trying to say is that maybe memory uh, and nostalgia are good things but from my experience of reading it I'm not too sure. I think that the idea of nostalgia can be somewhat of a disease and stop progress if you are constantly pining for something in the past. And I just don't know where the book's at. And at the end of it, it didn't help me make my mind up on it either. So overall, all right. <laughs> if I could give it some stars, I'd give it two stars. Uh, the pros are definitely that it's uh, an interesting novel in its approach. I think that Jennifer Egan is clearly a very talented writer. Um, at no point did the writing feel clunky and every story, the perspective it was told from, felt well realised and the character was brought to life in a very short amount of time and I was able to connect to their kind of, their personality, their drive, their emotional core and all these things I think are incredibly hard to do in a short amount of time and that proves that Jennifer Egan is definitely for me a reader that I'm going to go and do some more stuff. But for this novel, in essence, the stories fell a bit flat and the ending and the book in its entirety was just a little bit nah. And there you go. I uh, just wanted to say a massive thank you. This is a new channel, so a big thank you to all the new subscribers. I really, really do appreciate it. It's awesome. And as always, if you have any thoughts and feelings about this book, if you have read this book, uh, please comment below. Uh, and maybe, you know, I miss things. So if there's anything you think I've missed or any central themes in the work that I haven't touched upon, amazing. Please comment below and we can have a chat. All right. Cheers, everybody.